Hello everyone and welcome back to another brand new episode of MotoGP 21 Career Mode. In today's episode we go to France, to Le Mans and first off we have a bit of team development for the Moto2. Now I'm going to go with a pretty big one, 300k, 12 weeks but it gives us plus 20% experience gain. That will be very crucial for our Moto2 boys. So we're just lacking ever so slightly on a bit of experience and knowledge of the class. We're also going to... Yeah, we're going to go with the 3% bike development. That is a lot of money we've just spent on the Moto2 team. About 400k in total. We have nothing at the moment for the Moto3 boys. They are having a great time. If you look at Rizal, he's up to an S-class rider. I didn't realise that. And uh, I also didn't realise before I was recording, I was playing around Qatar 2. We got a 1-2, our first ever 1-2. I didn't realise that, so fantastic from the uh, Moto3 boys, Manuel Hernandez and Jack Rizal. They are performing at such an extreme level at the moment. I'm delighted. But anyway, we got a couple of extra engineers, two to be exact, in the previous episode. So we're going to go straight back in with some more electronics now i can't do traction two i can do anti really one i can do engine uh, ebs what's ebs or oh, engine brake increase didn't know we, i didn't know you could upgrade that engine brake increase or anti wheelie i'm gonna go on anti wheelie because we were absolutely the devil on the brakes in hereth in two turn five so i think braking were already pretty damn well good um did I just take all the stuff off it? Yeah, I think I did. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to put everyone on it. Just get it knocked out as fast as possible. So it's down to three weeks. That's perfect. That means I think they'll come in, if my maths are correct, just after the Catalonia test. So one, two, three. We'll actually get it. We'll get it for Catalonia. And then after that, we have such a, a kind of a mammoth of rounds. We go straight to the test the day after the race. Then we fly to Germany for Saxony, and then we have Assen. Then we have a nice little break where we can uh, start getting some more done. But until then, it's going to be pretty manic. We have a break in between Le Mans and Mugello. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get off to France and see can we continue our stunning form. Here we are in Q2. We're coming out of the corner to start our flying lap. 30 seconds remaining, so we're really leaving it to the end of the session. Miller currently in P1. We did a 30, 1 minute 30.2 in Q1, and that was enough to top the session by almost 0.8 of a second. So if we can get anywhere near that lap time, I believe we should get pole again today. We're tenth and a half off Miller in sector one. We did make a mistake into turn one. That did catch us a bit there, but we should have the pace in the rest of the lap, I would believe. And this will be our fourth pole in a row, I think. I think we got pole in Qatar too. Oh no, we terrible sure we terrible qualifying in Port of Mauer. We're back to back poles, it would be if we can. And at the midway point of the lap down into the bus stop. And we are just under tent under Fabio Quattro, the home home hero, the French giant, is after having a spill at the end of qualifying. And uh, we make a big mistake into there. That's gonna catch us. I think that might be the pole lap gone. We're three tenths over. It's gonna be hard to make that up in the final sector. It's just important now we finish this long this lap strongly. Into the double apex corner we come. I'm in hot. I'm in very hot. Up to the line we come. What's it going to be? It's going to be a 30. Puts us P4. So we're just off front row. So big mistake there. And uh, that has cost us pole. So a pretty average lap overall. But we're still in the hunt for tomorrow for the victory. So let's jump into the race. So interesting tire strats soft front medium rear is the recommended what miller went with peco bagnaia has gone with soft soft same at lacona so i know for a fact the soft rear will not last which means that has put peco in a bad situation we've gone medium medium for reference same as mark Marquez, who's just behind us so it's going to be a rate once we get a good start it isn't 
very important that we just manage our tyres because I believe Peko is going to go backwards with that soft rear. There's only one way that's going to go. I have question marks over the soft front on Miller, but he ran it in Hareth as well, which I would have been surprised about. But he managed to make it last. But anyway, five red lights, and that was a very, very poor start. We didn't judge the lights very well. The Ducati of Zarko behind us is right up on our tail into turn one, turn two, they call this. And we're holding station. We're going to take a tight line into the first of the chicane. There's a crash back there. I can't see who it was. Road on the curb. We get no drive off these bloody curbs. And we got a track limit warning there for touching a bit of a white line. Mark is having a look up the inside. We're going to just maintain position just about. Very good start again from the Aprilia Valacia Spagaro. That Aprilia really is turning into a bit of a weapon. We are going to have a load just on the wrong side when coming into the braking zone. He's just going to keep the inside line and squeeze us. That might invite Marcus to have a look. No, he's not close enough. But we get a great exit. Just get a wheelie. We have a look on the brakes. We're not close enough yet though. Flying information. So to Ducati 1, 2 at the moment. And we're back here in P5. So once again... We haven't nailed the start yet with this Ducati. Oh, Marcus is pretty aggressive there into the S Blues. Turn 11. The sector here, the Ducati doesn't really want to turn that well. It's not the most agile of bike. This track has been pretty good to Ducati over the years, though. They've always seemed to get a, such a good result here. And that's a second warning on the opening lap. That is not good when we've nine laps around here. Oh, Marquez, I had to pick the bike up. That was a close call at 180 miles an hour or so. And that's completely thrown us off our line into one. And that's caused a big wheelie because we didn't get the line right. And we're deep then into La Chapelle. And that has left Marquez alongside. We should just about maintain the racing line into Museum. Which we do. But we're again in hot. And Peko, again now soft soft, I'm not worried about him disappearing at the front because I believe lap 7, 8, 9, he will be in the wars with them tyres. But my mediums aren't really coming to me. Could be the medium front. The soft was recommended and I don't really like going with a soft front. I might need to try it on the Ducati. To be fair, I've yet to try it in a race on the Ducati, so maybe the Ducati can run it. But on the back of the Aprilia again. Marcus must have made a mistake because he's dropped back by about half a second now to my rear wheel. We have a look on the older of the two Spagor brothers, I think he is. I think he's the older of them. I think Alesha is the older one, yeah. On the Aprilia, but we get... Oh, don't get the track limits on it. We touched the curb and I completely screwed up our drive. 30.8, so we're pretty much on Peko's pace. Which is good. Alright, maybe lunge at the Spagro. No. Not this time around. So it's the three boys again at the front. Peko, Jack and Fabio. So, And then a late, he's like the fourth man in this championship. So it's... Hard if I get the move done, we're going to try something a bit outrageous going around the side, but he's going to cut us back. But we're going to try and square him off on the exit. And it looks like it's worked. That's a great exit there, using that Ducati power. Question is, will he send it up the inside on the brakes? No, he will not. He tucks in behind now, as he knows I'll have the pace to pull him along. Now we're just in behind the home hero, Fabio Cotteraro. He will be giving it everything today to get victory in front of his home crowd. Oh, mistake in there. That should have been a third track limit. So I won't get it here. I am struggling a lot with the change of direction and the opening laps of this Grand Prix. Unfortunately, the Ducati is not abiding really well. So we set the fastest lap of the race at 30.5. And you might notice I now have four track limits warnings. So I'm one away from a penalty. That lap, oh, we get all on the wrong side of Fabio into turn one, or turn three even. 
And that completely skews our run down into... Oh, we have to sit him up, does contact. The rear let go. But we managed to get the position done. We just sat him up, he leaned on me. The rear was sideways, I couldn't tip in yet. But uh, yeah, I made a big mistake into museum on the previous lap. And that got me a track limps warning. I'm also really overheating the left side of my rear tire, which is slightly worrying. So, I am kind of in a bit of a pickle here, because I don't know, I can't really, my pace is good enough to win this, I believe, but I need to manage the track limits. I have a long way to go, and I need to keep it inside the white line, so it's going to be hard to keep the pace at a high level. The rear end is not in a good way. This is the first time all weekend I've run a medium rear, and it is showing, because I just don't have the edge grip. And just under braking, I'm actually struggling quite a bit. I'm just noticing the bike under transitions is just a little bit too loose for my liking. Oh, we're in very hot into the final corner. We make a lot of time up on Miller. Out to the curb, into his slipstream we go. Maybe going to see, can we try a move into turn three? We're going to go for a bit of a wide line. But he parks on the apex. I'm going to leave the brakes off. Can we have a look? Yes, we can, but he should have the switch back. We're going to try and fire it up the hill. Side by side with Miller. But I don't have the optimal line come down the hill. Again, he just tries to lean on me. But we have the inside for Le Chappelle. And that should be P2. So a good bit of battling again with Miller. He's always good to have a little battle with. And now it's Peko. So the man who's on double soft. So I'm going to be very gentle with him. Hi Peko. He has a quick look over his shoulder at me. I'm actually going to just go into a bit of management mode now of my tyres. Just because they're getting a little bit too hot for my liking, especially with the overtakes on Miller. I just have to use a bit too much edge grip in place. I really want to use it. We do have plenty of fuel on board if we need it. Just slightly, slightly hot nearly everywhere on brakes. I wonder now what his tyres are feeling like. So I said lap 7, 8 and 9 is when he should struggle. And uh, we are just about to come on out to lap 7. That was close there in the final penultimate corner. Out to the white line. That's not really where you want to be going when you have a risk of a penalty. Goes defensive into 1, 2 and 3. Oh, again, we are cutting a fine here. We're making a lot of mistakes. Just in my head thinking about that. I know I can't go off track. Is making a few mistakes. Again, look at the rear end. Just completely sideways over the hill there. That's not very nice to be trying to get the bike to turn in when it's that sideways. We definitely have pace on him. We're closing into the back now into the museum. We might try to move. But again, I just want to make sure the left side of my rear doesn't go off. Because Miller... Has a medium rear on as well, so he could come back to me if I shred it trying to pass Peko. Gambridge is on the back of him. Short shift in the second. And look at the drive we get. We just get a weedy dozy on team, but we should have the inside. He breaks early. We're very deep again. Unfortunately, we did what we did on our qualifying lap. And he flies by. We just had to leave him have it. That's left. Almost let Jack back ahead. And it's brought Fabio back into the fold. So his pace doesn't seem that bad now. My lap time is quite a bit off. Off, oh, Jesus. Into that corner. For some reason they break ridiculously early compared to me. Oh, he's got a poor exit but we're kind of stuck to the back of him. Side by side. Do you reckon his tyres are gone? We're going to go to the outside for turn three. And maybe get him up the hill if we can. Slow in fast out particularly is the way I want to do it again just wheeling but we have the move but I reckon we're going to run it wide yes we are very aggressive on it there and we just tuck back in get to drive up the hill though but again we are wrong side of him oh I nearly touched the white line there that would have been the long lap still might get it no and that's Miller gonna just have enough speed to carry around the outside of him and look at Fabio 
Mikey is thinking my first home victory is on the cards and these boys wipe each other out. Penultimate ah, Jesus, the front wash there very aggressively. Now I need to pull the finger out and get this moved on. We got serious drive out that time. I need to make the apex, but look at Peko on the brakes. That was some dive from him in fairness, but he got it stopped. Clean as you like, unlike Kareth. Peko. Now that's Jack coming on again. So this is... We're all, all three Ducatis are strong in different areas of the track. Jeez, we got such a good exit there, unfortunately. That completely threw me off into turn 11. But again, into 13. We are too close to the back to do anything. So now, final lap time. We need to get this moved on. I'll take a real wide line into turn 2. Hopefully then I can turn underneath him just. But he just has the inside line, we're on the outside, but he runs at a touch deep, doesn't leave us anywhere to go. Can we get this moved on again? No, we run up the back of him. We have a look, we're just not able to, he gets it down perfectly on the apex. And look at Miller, Miller wants in on this. I think his tyres are done, he's just been basically pushed out of the way by our pace. Now we have a lap to go to get our second victory, but Miller looks like he has pace. I think Fabio might even get him. I think the gamble to go soft, soft has finally caught up to him. So I've been struggling all race with these tyres. They have not felt good. The deg wasn't too bad. They just didn't give me anything out of performance wise. But we've got great exit once again out of the bus stop. And I should, should be it once we negotiate the chicane without getting... A warning. I cannot believe it. I bloody jinxed myself. Oh, that's off the podium, I'd say. What a bloody nightmare that is. The bike just would not turn, and just once again, another mistake for myself. Into the final corner as we come. I don't know where we're going to end up. It's going to be off the podium. I cannot believe that we just threw away a victory. My guy seems pretty happy. P6. I act. I'm speechless. So that was the first time we were going to lock out the podium as well. Oh no, we did it in Heret, didn't we? Because Miller came home in third. Sixth. Oh my god, that is such a nightmare. Oh, and I, you, <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe that happened. Because I even sat up and I braked to see what, if I just rolled across slowly, would it not count? But it did, and that probably lost me more time. Oh my god, I'm not a fan of the track limits of this track, and that's why. Because my first one was a load of shit. I touched the white, oh, no, it's done now, it's done, just forget about it. P6, that's probably going to push us right back into... Yeah, we lost the championship lead to Jack. I was going to say it's going to be tight, but we've lost it again to Jack. Yui takes the lead. Ah, oh, he gets another victory. Well done to Jack. He well deserved that one. He uh, rode quite well. We keep the team championship lead, and we're going to be well ahead once again in the constructors. But what a bloody nightmare! That really has annoyed me. Ah. Oh. Alright, Mangello's next. We need to redeem ourselves at Mangello at Ducati's home track. We need to secure a victory there and retake our championship lead from our teammate. But, how did my boys in Moto2 do? So, once again, Dom is turning into a tidy little Moto2 rider. Qualified P16, almost in the top 10. So, more points for DA98 Moto2. Camora, or Carmona, again. Again, just qualified 20 made at one position, so slightly better. Just not good enough yet, but we're giving him time. And look at that. Look at that. First and fourth for my Moto3 boys. They are on it this year. Rizal qualified second. Hernandez seventh. First for Rizal. So that's the fourth victory of the year for this team out of six races, I think. So these boys are absolutely loving this. They're having a great season, so I'm really happy with that. Not really happy with my own result, but... What can you do? We have Mugello next, which will be an absolute humdinger in Mugello. We cannot wait to get to Mugello. It's one of the best tracks of the year for our bike. It should be our best chance of another victory. 
and uh, yeah i am extremely looking forward to that so i just want to end the video off here thank you all once again for watching if you did like it drop a like down below and subscribe to see more and i'll catch you all in the next one Bye bye